Good morning. Good morning. Peace of the Lord be with you as we gather worship today. Uh, I'd like you to think about both the gospel reading and the Old Testament reading because they go hand in hand today. And our gospel reading, of course, we hear uh, the beautiful words of John 3.16, for God so loved the world. But at the beginning of it, it reminds us that just as uh, Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And our Old Testament reading, of course, is that passage from Numbers about the bronze serpent on a pole. For us, where do we look? Where do we look when we need forgiveness? Where do we now look when we need comfort? Where do we look when we need a reassurance? Where do we look when we need hope? We look to the cross. And that's a reminder for each and every one of us always. We look to the cross as the message of our God's love for us. So before we get underway, let's take a moment to greet one another, stand, wave, wish each other the peace of the Lord, introduce yourself if you can. I dug. Hey Rob. Mary? Linda? How are you feeling? Good. Sally? Pete? Yeah. That's Andy. Okay. 
We join them by singing hymn number 971, even though it's not in the hymnal technically. There is a Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I... <clears throat> I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let's pause for a moment, reflect on God's word, and examine our hearts and minds, confessing our sins to our Father in heaven, personally and individually. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in reading our intro responsibly half verse by half verse and join in the glory be to the Father. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The Lord rise against me, yet I will be confident. 
One thing I've asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. For me, he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high on the rock. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Join in the Kiri. Let us join together in praying the collect of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join 
singing our hymn of the day, hymn 571, verses 1 to 3 and verse 6. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Please read verse 16 with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be, should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. And we sing our children's song, For God So Loved the World.
Good morning. morning. All right. So, how many of you were a little bit uh, angry or upset or just didn't feel the best this morning because of daylight savings time? I know I didn't sleep the best either. I woke up in the middle of the night, probably checked my alarm to make sure, hey, is the time actually correct? I need to get up on time, right? Went out into uh, my main area in the kitchen to see that I had set the uh, clock on the microwave the night before, making sure that that time matched the time on my phone, making sure that that time matched the time on my, you know, computer and everything like that. So, daylight savings, you know, we don't get the best sleep, and yeah, I complained about it, right? I really don't like daylight savings. Now, speaking about complaining, we hear in the Old Testament how the Israelites complained, right? They complained, oh God, we don't have food. Why did you lead us out of Egypt? This is terrible, we don't like it here, yada, yada, yada. And guess what happened to them after they complained? Well, we heard it. The snakes came, right? The scary old snakes that everyone, you know, probably not many people like snakes either, right? Biting people, causing harm, things like that. And I'm all sure we've also probably gone through some type of illness. And yeah, illness isn't great. And so now the Israelites have even more to complain about, right? Well, why were they complaining in the first place? And what were they complaining about? Well, they weren't focusing on God, really. And they thought they had the right to complain. That gave them the right to complain. But like always, God is there for them. God is faithful to them. Even though they're complaining, you know, as we complain about many things, whether we don't have food or whatever it may be, right? Our life is hard, too. And so what God did was he said, hey, on a pole, you're going to put a bronze serpent. Now, mine isn't bronze, but here's my snake on a pole, right? So here is the solution. Raise up the pole and said everyone who looks at this will be healed, right? And so... That is what happened. That is how the Israelites got healed. Now, I'm going to walk over here, and hopefully you can see something similar. serpent was lifted up for the Israelites, so Jesus was lifted up, right? And so whoever looked upon the serpent was healed, and as we look upon Jesus with our faith, right, we are healed, not specifically of all our bodily ailments as the Israelites were, but of our sin, right, because we are sinners. We have a lot wrong with us as well. We sin all the time. We lie. We complain. We don't appreciate what God has given us, just like the Israelites. They complained because they didn't have food, they didn't have water, and it was terrible out in the wilderness, even though God was still providing all of what they needed. And so we, too, can complain. We complain about what we don't have. We complain about daylight savings, right, all these different things. But despite all of our complaining, Just as God saved the Israelites, he also saves us through Jesus on the cross. And so we want to look to Jesus, even though, yes, we are sinners. We look to Jesus because that is where our hope comes from. That is where our forgiveness comes from. And so the story of the Israelites in the wilderness very much parallels that of Jesus on the cross. So will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for providing Jesus to die for our sins. Help us to look to him for our faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and we'll join and confess our faith in the words of hymn 953.
peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the servants from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is our text. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we ask, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts, our minds, our souls, and fill us with the hope that we receive from your promise, from your power, from the gift of salvation you give us in Jesus. Help us, help us to trust in him and in him alone, to trust in all that he has given us, not to trust in ourselves, not to trust in anything or anyone except him for that precious gift of life. Move us to turn to him in every moment of need that we may find the comfort, the strength, and the peace that we need to know Jesus alone as our Savior. In his name, amen. You may be seated. I, I don't know about you, um, uh, people seem to have one fear that is really difficult for them to handle. I know for my wife it's spiders. She just freaks out whenever she sees one. Uh, I know there are people who are afraid of heights, people who are afraid of uh, closed in spaces, people who are afraid of all kinds of things. Mine is snakes. Uh, I, I'm going to share with you, uh, in my previous parish, uh, the whole building was on one level. And um, for air conditioners in our offices, they had uh, a, a built-in unit in the wall, like the ones you might see in a, in a motel room. And so um, I was noticing on my window ledge, which was just above that air conditioner, that there were... Um, kind of gross deposits everywhere. And I'm wondering, there's no birds in here. Where is this stuff coming from? And until I came into church one morning, and there in the hallway, laying on, uh, on the tile, is a pretty good-sized garter snake. And I'm like, and my secretary's freaking out. And I said, okay, well... I'm just as freaked out as you are, but uh, I'll try to handle it. And so I uh, you know, found a trash can and a broom and sweeped it into the, the trash can and took it outside and threw it out. Go in my office, sit down, turn on my computer, and I'm starting to hear something rumbling around in my trash can. I'm like, oh, not another one. And I, sure enough, I look in the trash can, and there's another one. And so, you know, quick run outside, throw it away, and, and, and this time I'm, I'm kind of frazzled. And so um, one, of, one of my uh, favorite movies, of course, is uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, first Indiana Jones movie. And so we have to play the clip. <coughs> if you're not freaked out yet, <clears throat> wait. Take it back to the beginning. Now we begin. Snakes. Ah. 
wasps. Very dangerous. You go first. I think that's what my secretary said that morning. Um, so I, I want us to get that kind of feeling. And, and uh, as we, we get that feeling, I said this in my devotion on, uh, on, Thursday, or on uh, Tuesday, I believe. What if God turned our greatest fear against us every time we complained? How quickly would we shut up? Uh, I, I want us, as we're thinking about this, to see the reason. Why did God become so impatient? What had God done for these people? They were in, in Egypt. They are under slavery. They begged for freedom. What did God give? Freedom. freedom. Led them out of Egypt. Delivered them took them to the edge of the Red Sea. Egyptians are on their tail. God opens the Red Sea, lets them go through on dry ground. As soon as the Egyptians get in, they're all drowned. And so God completely delivers them. They're in the wilderness, they're hungry. God gives them food that they don't have to plant grain for, but still just appears. And if you also read the scriptures, not only did he do that, but he sent pheasants so that they could gather and have all kinds of meat as well. And as we see the hand of God providing, we see the hand of God blessing, we see the hand of God giving, yet they complain. They complain nonetheless. And so what did God allow them to experience? Fear, suffering, and death. Are we seeing a parallel yet? People in our world became far too content with things of this world. Far too content with all that money could provide. Far too content with living high. And then when God says, okay, they've lost it because they're not even acknowledging me. They're walking away from my house. They're not even paying attention to my word. I've got to get their attention. Their overcontentment, our overcontentment, and the things of this world are just as bad as the complaints. Just as bad as the complaints because we're taking the credit for what God's doing. And any time that there was something slightly out of range, we blamed it on God, right? 9-11, why did God allow this to happen? COVID, why did God allow this to happen? Wait a minute. Who brought this on? Really? Who really brought this on? And it's so very needful for each and every one of us to recognize we live in a sin-corrupted world. And as we live in a sin-corrupted world, God's trying to get our attention back on him. God's trying to get our attention where it needs to be first, foremost, and always. We start with the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. But what we had was, I'm fearing and loving and trusting in me above all things. That's where we had gone. And God said, uh-uh. I need their attention. I need their focus. I need their minds and hearts back on me. And so, what did he allow? COVID. COVID. 
when we look at the cross, we recognize that God is a God of mercy. God is a God of grace. God isn't going to turn his back on us. But what we also need to see is that great parallel. The great parallel that John gives us in his gospel. That Jesus spoke those words. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Notice the parallel. Notice what God is doing. Notice what attention he's trying to help us understand. Because Jesus wasn't just a mere man. He was far more than that. Jesus wasn't just a simple sacrifice. He was far more than that. Sometimes we look at things and we assume this is just something uh, ordinary. There's nothing special about it. Do we truly recognize what the cross says whenever someone's wearing it? The cross is the message of God's love, and the gift of his salvation, the message of his mercy and grace, the message of his power and his wisdom and his justice, all wrapped up in something that seems so simple. Um, I've said this before, I'm a big James Bond fan. I love watching every James Bond movie, and I love it when they do a marathon where I can watch one after the other after the other. Um, recently, they had uh, a Bond marathon, and uh, I watched again uh, the movie uh, from Russia with Love, and this is the first appearance of the character Q, who is in charge of the gadgets. Wes? Q branch has put together a smart looking piece of luggage for us. We're issuing this to all double O personnel. An ordinary black leather case with 20 rounds of ammunition here and here. Now, if you take the top off, you'll find the ammunition inside. On the side here, flat throwing knife. Press that button there, and out she comes. Inside the case, you'll find an AR-7 folding sniper's rifle, 0.25 caliber with an infrared telescopic sight. Then if you pull out these straps, inside are 50 gold sovereigns, 25 in either side. Now watch very carefully. An ordinary tin of talcum powder. Inside a tear gas cartridge. That goes in the case against the side here like that. It's magnetized, so it won't fall. Shut the case. Now normally to open a case like that, you move the catches to the side. If you do, the cartridge will explode in your face. Now, to stop the cartridge exploding, turn the catches horizontally, like that. Then, open normally. Now you try it. Very well. I wanted to share that with you because it looks like an ordinary briefcase, but it's so much more. It looks like an ordinary tin of talcum powder, but it's so much more. It looks like a simple bronze snake, but it's so much more. It's so much more why? So much more why? What made it different? What made it powerful? What made it a healing? thing. What? Absolutely. God's promise. God's promise attached to that object. God's promise attached to what he was going to do through that object. 
And it, that is where we see the providing of God, the power of God, the God using something simple, something ordinary, something that we kind of take for granted, but has so much more power in it. And I want us, as we look at that, to make that connection. Look at the bronze serpent. Why was it similar to what their problem was? The Israelites' problem was snakes. Snakes that had a fiery venom. Snakes that caused them pain, suffering, and death. And God said, okay, make a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, and everyone who looks at it lives. He doesn't take the snakes away. He doesn't take the problem away. He doesn't take the pain away. He doesn't take the suffering away. But what does he take away? Death. And therefore, the fear that goes with it. As we look at what Jesus did, who is the source of our pain? This one's going to be hard because you have to look into a mirror. Who is the source of our pain? We are. are. Say, when Adam and Eve were. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, they might have committed the first sin, but how many of you have sinned since? Only me? I better see every hand. (laughs) We're the source of our own problems. We're the source of our own suffering. We're the source of our own pain. We're the source of our own death. Does God take all that away? Does he? Does God take all of that away? You're never going to have any problems in this world. You're never going to have any suffering in this world. You're never going to have any pain in this world. You're never going to have any disappointment in this world. God takes all that away, right? No. No. What does he take away? Sin. Death and hell. That's what we see in the cross. God doesn't take away our pain. God doesn't take away our suffering. God doesn't take away our trials, our hardships, our difficulties. God takes away the ultimate punishment. God takes away death. And as God takes away death, then what do we have to be afraid of? What do we have to be afraid of? Because Jesus took it away. The thing that's driving all the fear in this coronavirus thing is the fear of death. Not the fear of the virus, it's the fear of death. Jesus took it away. That's what the cross and resurrection are all about. And as the cross and resurrection are about that, then it requires an action on our part, doesn't it? Because what action needed to happen for the Israelites to be spared from death. They weren't spared from the snake bites. They weren't spared from the pain that those snake bites caused. But what were they spared from? Death. But what did they have to do in order for that to happen? They had to believe believe and act on that faith. They had to believe and look to the bronze serpent. What's he calling on us to do? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. It's right where you go back to. Trust in his promises. Trust in his word. Trust in the gifts that he gives. Trust in all that he does for us in Christ. He doesn't take away our pain. He doesn't take away our suffering. He doesn't take away our trials or hardships. He takes away death. And as he gives us that, then we can live life, quote unquote, bulletproof, without fear. Because we know, we know that in the end, Jesus has saved us. We can look to the cross in faith. We can look to the cross in absolute trust and know my sin is taken away. And I have eternal life. 
no matter what fears, hardships, or trials we're facing. As you leave today, I gave these out quite a while ago, but I'm going to give them out again. I'm going to give everybody a coin on the way out. It's got the first part of John 3.16 on one side, the other part of John 3.16 on the other, and in the center, a cross. And if you take, because it's cut out, and you take and push that cross against your, your thumb or finger, it will leave that imprint of the cross to remind you. So that every time you're facing suffering, every time you're facing hardships, every time you're facing trials or pain or difficulties, you can reach into your pocket or purse and hold it to remind yourself of his promise, to remind yourself of his love, to remind yourself of his mercy and grace toward you. So that whenever we're facing the fears that we're going to face in this world, where do we turn? There's a contemporary Christian song I heard on the radio. When you're too afraid to pray, when you're too afraid to do anything else, just say the name Jesus. To remember his love, his promises. Turn to the cross. Look to Jesus. Trust in him and live. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. Let us stand for prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, there are so many times that we are fearful so many times that we're facing trials and hardships, so many times that we wallow in self-pity and complain because of our situation or circumstance. We ask that you would help us instead to turn to you. Turn to you in trust. Turn to you in steadfast faith. Turn to you in love, for you first loved us. And as you first loved us and gave yourself on the cross for us, we know that when we look to you, turn to you, trust in you, rely on you, there's nothing that we need to fear. There's nothing we need to fear because you have delivered us from the ultimate, the ultimate pain, the ultimate separation from you. You've delivered us from death. Help us, Lord. Help us to know that you are there always. Help us to trust in you fully and completely and help us rely on you in the midst of every circumstance, looking to you and your cross as the reminder and as the source of our salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all of those who are in physical need. We pray especially for Barb Flagstad in hospice care, for Joe Kern having surgery this coming week, for Linda Bramer undergoing tests this week, for those undergoing treatment, Lincoln Candidate, Katie Klopek, Eleanor De Winter, Sharon Eichmann, Becky, LMML, North Wisconsin District President, Lori Harris, Cindy Heidke, Susan Klatt, Ver Vera Kosmicki, Tiana Lang, Gail Maton, Jennifer Nearing, Roger Nowak, Jean Palomino, Dave Tucker, Cheryl Weiss, and Glenda Whipperford. We also pray for those who are recovering. We pray for Doug Beal, Klaus Becker, John Berry, Bruce Burt, uh, Richard Craven, Linda Druckrai, Dale Foz, Janet Grohl, Karen Hansen, Jill Jansen, Lou Kramer, uh, Susan Kupski, Don Smith, and Lyndon Zellner. We also pray for those who have ongoing health problems, Neil Anderson, Bob Barrett, Margie Berglund, Jean Massaro, Louise Christopoulos, Ed Forrell, Luann Grismel, Orville and Vi Howard, Ron Howard, uh, Sue Keenitz, Laura Lee, Susan Lutzow Bus, Tom Meath, Marshall and Sheila Piotr, Mary Perlot, Jeanette Raditz, Phyllis Smeester, Madonna Trotz, and Bill Wagner. Grant healing, Lord, if it is your will. Comfort and strength as only you can provide. And trust in you. Trust in you above their, 
uh, current circumstances, trust in you and your cross as a reminder of your love and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would comfort those who mourn. We pray especially for the family and friends of Michelle Noyan, uh, who went to her eternal rest this week. Remind those who mourn that you have conquered death. You have destroyed its power. You have taken away its sting. And as you have taken away its sting, its power, and its destruction, you have given us the assurance of life. Life with you, life everlasting, life with all those who have gone before us in the faith. Bring comfort and peace to all her family and friends, reminding them that we will celebrate a joy-filled reunion with you, with her, and with all those who call on your name. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we pray for all caregivers, that they would have strength, patience, and perseverance to be able to provide care for their loved ones. For families in crisis, we pray for reconciliation, forgiveness, and healing, as only you can provide. We pray for our, all ministries, especially Elliot and Serena Derricks, working with Lutheran Bible Translators, for our school ministries of Trinity Lutheran School and NEW Lutheran High School, and for all our sister congregations and their ministries here in Green Bay and throughout the world. Father, you have given us the joy of salvation, the reassurance that our Savior was given to set us free and give us life. Help us. Help us to convey this to our world and help them know, believe, and trust in you, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who serve in our armed forces. We pray especially for Christian Altergott, especially as he's recovering from some injuries. Paige Bogner, Tess and Sean LaRue, Roy McDonough, Garrett Moen, Maggie Knoll, Ron Pezzi, and Nathan Schrader. Help them, O oh Lord, strengthen them to carry out their duties faithfully and bring them home in peace soon. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask finally for our government. We pray for our president, our governor, and all in positions of authority, whether elected or appointed. Turn these back to you. Turn them in an understanding of your will and your way. Help us to live a life without complaint, but trusting in you, relying on you, and standing for your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. 
this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup. And after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated as we come forward for distribution. We'll continue the walking style of communion. Distribution, come to me, receive the host. Go to whichever side you're sitting on to receive the, the cup. We also have common cup. If you're communing from the common cup, please take hold of the chalice to assist the, the elder as you drink. We come forward for distribution.
Now may the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith through life everlasting. His peace be with you. For God so loved you that he gave you Jesus. Let us stand for prayer. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Jesus loves me. Pause for a moment of silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Just a, a couple of reminders as we close. Uh, first off, uh, you heard in our prayers that uh, Michelle Noyan, uh, a member here for quite a while, passed away. 
Um, she was in uh, Rennes Nursing Home over in De Pere for uh, the last couple of years. Um, her funeral will be on Saturday. Dale, do we have a time yet? Okay, so you're just gonna kind of have to wait and hear uh, sometime on Saturday, either early uh, Saturday afternoon or, or late Saturday morning. So um, that time is yet to be determined. So it will be on Saturday, however, um, that funeral for Michelle Noy. Uh, also a reminder that uh, Buya is coming up. That is the Saturday before Palm Sunday. So just a couple weeks away. There's still sign-up sheets out in the back. Um, I, I saw May and Bud get out the, the sign. So if you'd like to take a sign and place it somewhere that can be seen, um, just remember where you put it and bring it back. They said they've lost quite a few signs over the last few years. So they're not ready yet. Oh, they're not ready yet. Well, then forget that. Uh, okay, um, last announcement. There in the bulletin uh, is an uh, announcement regarding Jill Kern. Um, I want to kind of give you some updates. Uh, Jill is having a surgery um, to remove a leg above the knee on Wednesday due to cancer that is a pretty aggressive cancer, and they're hoping that the amputation will um, stop it. Uh, she doesn't want a lot of people coming over to the house. Um, she's having a, a pretty difficult time, as you can imagine, dealing with this. So um, please don't barrage her with all kinds of visits. You know, you send a card or whatever. Um, there's a couple of things that she do, uh, does need. One, she's gonna need a dog walker. So if anyone's willing to do that, uh, contact the office, we'll contact the family. You know, providing any meals, you, you, they would happily accept that again, bring them here to church, we'll, uh, remember the family will deliver them to Jill. And then um, finally, we're gonna have a door offering to help uh, take care of a lot of the things that are not you know, covered by insurance. Um, we were told that she could have either crutches or a wheelchair, but not both. Explain that one. But you, there's lots of things like that so um, there's a lot of things that insurance just doesn't cover. Uh, they're gonna need to put in a wheelchair ramp and uh, handholds and restrooms and so um, we wanna help try to cover some of those costs. So uh, Wednesday the 24th and Sunday the 28th, we're gonna have a door offering uh, in those services to help provide for her uh, medical needs. So please keep that in mind. Um, and respect her wishes, of course. Any other announcements that need to be made? Peace of the Lord go with you. Have a blessed day in Jesus. He loves you. Thank you.